Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here, and today we're going to be investigating shotguns and their spread patterns when using multi-shot cartridges. There are a few things here that could potentially make a difference, so we're going to look at the weapons themselves and their barrels, the durability, muzzle devices, and finally ammunition. Before we begin, today's video is sponsored by Outplayed, a fantastic video capture app that lets you easily record your raids, which I'm always saying is an incredibly insightful tool for improving your game, and doubly so with your deaths. Outplayed supports 300 games, but for Tarkov specifically, it records each raid automatically as a separate video file, cutting out the stash organisation in between and saving you hard drive space, as well as giving you the option to bookmark sections while in raid as you go with a hotkey, such as after a really big fight, so you don't have to hunt around for it later on. Afterwards, you can use the inbuilt video editor to cut the video just to the section that you want and share it directly to Twitter, Discord, YouTube or Reddit from within the app itself to show your friends or the wider world. Do check it out, the link for the app is down in the description and the pinned comment. Alright, so starting with weapons and barrels, we have two different styles of shotgun within Tarkov from a game perspective, which are those that have a separate barrel and those that don't. In this game, almost all shotguns have a defined barrel, except for the Saiga 12 and the Toz, which is interesting because other shotguns that only have one barrel, such as the Revolver Shotty, still have it listed as a part all of its own. The easiest way to start testing these shotguns is to look at those with a high variety of barrel lengths available to them, two of which are the MP153 and the M870 pump action. Using both the shortest and longest barrels for the 153, we can see that there is a noticeable difference in the spread of the shots from each. These tests are using flechette unless otherwise stated. Likewise for the M870, again using the longest and shortest barrels for both shows that the long barrel has a much tighter pellet spread than that of the short barrel. So from this, we can safely say that the barrel length does in fact make a difference, and the shorter you go, the wider the spread on the pellets will be. Comparing this to the Saiga 12, which is better than the Toz for this experiment because it uses the same ammunition as the others that we've looked at so far, and using the shortest barrel on the M870 firing both shows that the Saiga is tighter too. Comparing against the long barrel, well, it's very difficult to say here which is better. Drawing a circle to encompass all of the shots on both targets appears to favour the Saiga 12, at least vertically, but this could well just be down to the randomness of the distribution at the edges, so it's very hard to know for sure. Repeating this with the 153 and the longest barrel shows something very similar again, so the Saiga appears to be much the same as a long barrel version of the other shotguns. Now with durability, this is kind of interesting. As you are probably aware, low durability affects the accuracy of weapons in general, measured as MOA in Tarkov, which ultimately tells us how widely a set of identical shots fired at the same point will disperse. This is a result of the inaccuracies within the weapon, ammunition, and everything else that makes up the firing system. Taking two 153 shotguns, one with 51 durability and the other with 100, we can see that the accuracy difference is over double on the one with low durability. Bringing these into a test raid and firing using AP-20 slugs shows this most obviously as we only have a single projectile and the deviation around the aim point is clear between the two. However, the relevance of this accuracy stat to shotguns with multi-shot cartridges is slightly less clear. Even when using flechette, it does appear that the spread of the pellets is slightly wider on the shotgun with low durability. Now, I can't prove this 100%, but I think that this is a reflection of the MOA itself, rather than the intrinsic spread of the pellets changing. When only firing one shell, it's almost impossible to draw any sensible conclusions due to the randomness of the darts and the low number of them, but when we fire multiple, as we have been doing through the course of this experiment, some of these will be landing at different central points due to the inaccuracy. Even though this is only a small difference, when we look at the slugs, AP-20 have an accuracy buff of 80%, which makes this effect look less impactful on the left-hand test. If the spread itself of the pellets or darts is unchanged, but the point of impact is what is different, what we're effectively doing is adding on the possible accuracy deviation all around the spread pattern circle, making it look wider when each individual shell inherently isn't deviating any more than on the high durability version. This is why I believe that we see a small increase in the spread pattern, but not as much as you would be led to believe by the MOA stat itself. Alright, next up we have muzzle devices. Broadly speaking, these seem to make no difference at all, despite the fact that chokes really should tighten the spread pattern, and to be honest, it would be kind of cool if they did. The ones that I looked at specifically were the Remington Tactile Choke and the Salvo Suppressor, but I couldn't see any difference in the patterns being produced from either. All of these muzzle devices have stats for accuracy, and on that basis I have seen some people expecting them to improve the spread, but the experiment that we just ran on durability explains why this makes basically no difference at all. 
The accuracy stat on all muzzle devices only changes the MOA of the weapon, which although is welcome on these shotguns, is often small compared to changing the barrel for example. We'll probably never practically notice the small incremental improvements in the positioning of the shot centre point, which is all it should be affecting rather than the spread of the pellets themselves. The final element to check here are the different ammunition types. For this, I tested the three most common cartridges, namely Flechette, Magnum and Express, which are probably the most interesting also partly because Express moves very quickly and Flechette moves very slowly. Between these three in a long barreled 153, again I could not see any difference between them practically speaking, and if there are any theoretical differences between them, I'm not sure that testing them physically like this would ever be able to show it. One point that is potentially interesting is the relative gappiness of some of the central sections after firing even up to 9 or 10 shells in the same place. This goes to show as a good reminder that when trying to hit a headshot you are somewhat at the whims of RNG when using these types of cartridges, and sometimes a dead on shot might not actually hit. One takeaway from this I suppose is firstly the potential superiority of leg meta in taking down targets more consistently, although only the KS-23 will do that in one shot, and secondly why Flechette ends up feeling pretty good anyway, due to firing at centre of mass where those small gaps matter much much less. So overall the verdict is that the only thing that affects having a tighter shotgun pellet spread is the barrel length that you are using. Sticking with the longest barrels or the Saiga will ensure that you have the tightest possible pattern when you fire, improving the consistency of headshots and potentially allowing more pellets to hit if going for leg meta instead. This is where I died last time, kind of weirdly. <laughs> yeah, night factory with a flashlight, exactly. Ballsy behavior. Doesn't sound to me like to get this here, does it? Don't know what you guys think, but. Seems unlikely. There's still scabs like up in here. I mean there could be could be scabs up here. Should we should we just go to office and have a look? Be that. It's together. <laughs> oh, got him, boys. Oh, it could be somebody in there. <laughs> I gave as close as <laughs> as close to swearing horribly as I ever do. Sudden realization of. Uh... It's the Flechette Express, my friends. It's the Flechette Express. And an L1. Well, you can either find a bigger bag. Tea bag. Tea bag. Oh, there's a lot of tea bags around. And to blast more scabs till you get a better backpack. Yeah, exactly. We'll find them, don't you worry. We'll find it back. We could always insurance for our shenanigans, but... This dude, he didn't have anything else to do. He just got this azimuth. Yeah. While he's been secure? Oh. That was an accident. <laughs> Here's Scab's the other end. Yeah, that was an accident. That was me taking it off my PMC. I guess we should we should really swap over to this, shouldn't we? I just couldn't be bothered because it was going to take too long, but we'll, we'll do it. We'll do it. Duck, 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 duck. Uh, 
Azimut, Ropital, Kalok. Tea bag. What's going on? Cannot escape from tea bags, can we? We're just gonna have to plop down, hope there's no one else. Okay. He's not got a bag on at all. Ay 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 ay. Okay, all right. Heard another one this side. Pilgrim Scav, come on. Hi, I'm the dude you killed at the bottom of Dome on reserve 20 minutes ago. Just watch the VOD. Ah! I thought you probably weren't the teammate of that guy. But he's took your stuff. Um, he did end up taking your stuff, sadly. He got to you before I did. Oh no. Gabby? Oh. Where is he? Let's see, has this guy got a bag? No, no bag. Hey, we got the... Got the scab BP. We did it, team. We did it. Oh, we'll take a boss cap as well while we're at it. Ah, oh. and we get a nice drink of juice. Well, these. You know what? The night raids was a great way to go about it, actually. The night raids was a great way to go about it. I think that's. Oh my god. What's our good friend Scav doing down here? Open this one up. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. There we go. Okay, cool. Well, that was good. I wasn't expecting to really complete that today. Sorry I had to. Tea bag. <laughs> What's that clip? Tea bag. <laughs> That's actually really funny. That's actually really, really funny. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. So next up, go and check out my video on the most accurate shotgun ammo in Tarkov. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons. Hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video. And as always, have fun in your raids. Thank <laughs> you.